98% people who lose money in options are because they trade unhedged. You do futures and options, you will neither have a future nor any option left. 95% of the people who lose money are option buyers. So buy and hold makes immense sense if your holding is good, if your analysis is good. Very few people find success in shorter time frames as far as trading is concerned. I am doing so well in my business, I am compounding my own business at a very breakneck speed. Why do I need an investment? The way to be successful right, is to have a system. And humans have demonstrated similar behavior of greed and fear across cycles yes. for thousands of years. And there are three ways only for a person to go broke, which is ladies, liquor and leverage. You buy the top performer every year. Either in stocks or in mutual fund, you'll never make a lot of money. Amrit Kal is not only for the economy, it is also for the stock market. Yeah. The absolute wealth hmm. that's going to get created in India over the next 10 years hmm. is far more Understood. than has got created in the last 70 years. How bullish you are on Indian equity in the next 10 years? Welcome to the AUM Finance Podcast. Uh, as I keep saying in all my podcast episodes, this AUM Finance Podcast is based on first principles of investing. Here we teach you how to fish. We teach you the basic principles of me creating wealth uh, using the various legal investment avenues available in the country. We are not going to talk about day-to-day -day market, what to do. If that is your area of interest, then this podcast is not for you. So who do I have today? I have Jimit Modi. Hi, Jimit. Welcome Hi. to the AM Finance Hi. Podcast. It's very nice to be here. Thank you for sparing your time. So, I'll do a formal introduction of Jimit. Uh, Jimit Vipul Modi is the founder, promoter and CEO of Samco Group. Samco Group is a leading wealth tech and investing services platform. Jimit, by education, is a CFA from US and a rank holder chartered accountant. Having spent more than 15 years working in leading financial services and other corporates in the country like Deloitte, JSW Steel, Cadbury India, Shopper Stop and DSP Merrill Lynch. Now let me spend uh, some time on what the Samco Group is about. The Samco Group operates broadly in three types of businesses. First is Samco Securities, which is a leading and profitable equity, equity and commodity broker. And I think it's a fixed fee platform, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then you have Samco Mutual Fund or Samco Asset Management Company, which is the newest baby in town in the world yeah. of mutual fund, youngest asset management company. And I'm sure you're going to do well. And you have Rank MF. Now, this is interesting. It offers financial product research. So, Rank MF is one of the leading mutual fund research platform in the country. And you are also into distribution and wealth management services. Yeah. Samco under Jimit has scaled from a 10-member team to a 550-member team uh, with revenue uh, crossing 150 plus crores. And you manage an equity and equity linked AUM of 3000 plus crore. Yeah. So, Jimit, it's an honor and privilege to have you on my podcast. Thank you so Welcome much. Welcome to the AUM Finance Podcast. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So, Jimit, uh, tell me further about Samco Group, right? How you took it from uh, when you started a couple of years back? How was the journey and what were you learning? So, I mean, you know, if I go back in history a little bit, so uh, as a the entity that exists today was actually founded in 2015. Okay. So, uh, in 2015, prior to that, you know, uh, my father had an erstwhile boutique uh, stockbroking uh, outfit. It used to go by the name of Samduddhi Stockbrokers. Okay. And uh, what we did is that in 2015, we said, okay, uh, I mean, the world is moving digital. There is a, a massive opportunity to build a financial services and investment services businesses in, in, in India. And with that mindset, we said, okay, let's go ahead and uh, uh, rebrand ourselves so that we can uh, 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 actually make use of this opportunity that is present in front of us. So with that, we uh, rebranded from Samruddhi to Samco in 2015. Okay. And uh, then what we did was, you know, uh, we scaled our, the first business, which was our broking business. One of the first guys to be there on the flat fee broking uh, side, we are an uh, immensely profitable player uh, there. Then what we did is then uh, in you know 2018, mm -hmm. uh, we applied to SEBI mm -hmm. for our mutual fund uh, license. We got our in principle in 2019 and then finally we launched in 2022. Okay. And the aspiration was very clear. So the aspiration, I mean, 
Samco, the purpose is very clear that we exist to create wealth for our investors. Mm. And uh, uh, there are different people, you know, if there's someone who wants to do a DIY, they can go and use a broking platform. There's someone who needs assistance, there is a wealth platform. If there's someone who just needs to go and buy a, a product, uh, there is the, the mutual fund platform. And the idea is very clear that there are enough and more things that, uh, you know, a retail investor may or may not be able to do by himself. Mm. And which is where we come in, we, we to build, to innovate products, to create value. And uh, in the process, create wealth for investors and uh, create a business for ourselves. So that's the broad uh, purpose as to uh, why we exist. Obviously, each of these businesses has their own purpose, has their own mission. And uh, But everything at the end of the day is aligned to creating wealth for uh, investors. Okay, wonderful. And you manage the financial services arm. That's you right. manage the entire Samco group. Okay. So what is it, uh, what is unique about Samco Securities? What is unique that you bring on the table compared to your peers or your competitors? Okay. Mm -hmm. So see, for, as far as Samco Securities is concerned, right, where, what our key positioning is that uh, we actually are not in the business of democratizing investing mm -hmm. like a lot of our other mm -hmm. competitors yes. are in. Ah. We are actually in the business of making existing investors, stroke traders, become much better at what they do. So that's who we cater to. And how do we do that? We hmm. say, we have, our, our entire positioning is is, is around, we actually, uh, we say, hum ke trading ka andekha sach aapko hmm. so that you can become a better trader. Now, what do okay. I mean by that? Is yeah. that, the, the, whether you are a successful investor or a trader or, uh, you know, direct equity investor, the answer to your success will really lie in your own trading behavior, your own trading pattern. What kind of stocks you pick, when you pick them, how much time do you hold them, how, what's your strike rate, what are your winners, what are your losers. Okay. So, you know, we often tell people that uh, in success in investing is essentially a mathematical equation. Hmm. Is that if you take 100 trades, hmm. how many times do you go right? Hmm. How many times do you go wrong? Hmm. When you go right, how much is your average gain? Yeah. And when, when you go, go wrong, wrong, how much is how your much average loss? Yeah. So think about it this way. And is that if you flip a coin, mm. you know, and uh, you can flip a coin 100 times. Mm. And every time you're right, mm. you get 2 rupees. Mm. And every time you're wrong, mm. you lose 1. Mm. If this is the equation, mm. ideally, you should be wanting to flip the coin infinite number of times. Understood. Yeah. Because you are making twice as much money when you are winning, when you are losing and the odds are about 50-50. Yes. So that's, now the reality is that if you, if I ask you as an investor, you know, mm. you have a direct equity account. Mm. What's your strike rate last year? Mm. I don't think 99% people have an, out of 100 have an answer to that question. Mm. Uh, I don't think, you, if I ask you what's your average gainer or average loser, people don't have answer to all these questions. So mm. what we do at Samco is actually we have a, a deep analytics platform that is built on top of the simple trading platform, which actually analyzes all of this behavior and helps, gives you insights on your own trading so that you can make course corrections to whatever is required to be done. Okay. And actually end up becoming a better and more successful investor. In so if, I'm, if I have an account with you, you will analyze my trades and how frequently you, and you give me a report. Every day. Every day. It's, it's real time. It's real time. It's real Achha. time. So what system have you in place that does this? What kind of software you have? So it's an in, 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 it's a system software that's been built in house. It's okay. proprietary to us. Mm. This we, we call it my trade story, mm. which is why, which basically means that you know it is your trades in your trade story. Your okay. trades have a story to tell. Okay. Uh, right. uh, uh, and you know every day. How you buying and selling uh, reflects your personality. It Correct. talks about your personality as a trader. Okay. And what's the track record? I mean, you've been analyzing. You, I'm sure you would be analyzing data on a wholesome as, yes. as one piece also, right? Yes. Amongst all those. So what is the strike rate? How good or bad traders or speculators are? So I think what we've realized is that uh, very few people find it, uh, find success in uh, shorter time frames as far as trading is concerned. I mean, as you increase the time frame mm. and you move from being a, a, an extremely hyper frequent trader to a, a more passive in, investor of sorts, uh, the chances and the odds of success mm. uh, uh, go up. So, mm. I mean, we'll see probably that 80-90% of our uh, derivative traders will end up losing money. Mm. 
80 90 percent of the derivative traders people who deal in fno futures and options end up losing money yes okay and uh, uh, you know as far as investors is concerned we still think that uh, you know almost 70 80 percent end up actually making money over the long term right okay. it's only 20 percent of those who in jimmy didn't make sense to be an investor and Absolute. never be a trader or a speculator unless you are a hard you are a hardcore professional hmm. and you do this for a living which most people are not which most people are not if you're doing speculation or trading or mm. derivative trading for the purpose of uh, as a hobby, mm. then you are bound to fail. So let me address the Gen Z here. This is coming from uh, the founder of Samco Securities. Yeah. That based on the data here that you've been analyzing over a period of time, 80, 90 percent of the traders lose money. Okay, that to the strike, the the probability of them making money twice in a row is also very low. Yeah. And 70, 80 percent of the investors make money. Investors yeah. are those who buy equity for a long period. Yeah. Let's say two, three years and beyond. Yes. Right. So buy and hold makes immense sense if your holding is good, if your analysis is good. Yes. Buy and hold does not mean buy and forget. Yeah. But yeah, I mean you have to keep 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 monitoring, it. keep reviewing. Uh, 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 but. You know, don't excessively over trade, don't excessively mm. uh, uh, go out of the way and over leverage. Yes. So I think there's mm. uh, you know, never leverage and trade. Yeah. And if you have doing leverage and you're doing FNO, then yeah. you're a gone case. Yeah. You will not survive. Yeah. I think there is a saying, you know, that huh. I think Mr. Munger and Buffett talk about huh. that there are three ways only for a person to go broke. Huh. Which is ladies, liquor and leverage. Ladies, liquor and leverage. But yes. what they meant huh. was that actually there is only one way to go broke, which is leverage, leverage. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the fun part that Charlie Munger, you know, is known to. Uh, yeah. In fact, I have, a, I have developed a saying of my own. If you do futures and options, you will neither have a future nor any option left. <laughs> so I am personally a hardcore equity investor, both in mutual funds and direct equity. But I have never activated my FNO. Yeah. I have not taught myself how to do an FNO. I don't think being a Buffett fan, you require that. Yeah. India has a structural growth story. Yes. Achha stock karit ke bhool gaye or monitor kar rahe ho. So that is more than enough. Yes, that is. For What's, most people, uh, yeah, that's uh, the right yeah, thing. Yeah. You're saying something. I think for most people, yes, that's the correct approach, yes. the right thing to do. Yes. And trading is like, ek var, once I had asked Rakesh Bhai, Rakesh Junjunwala, you know, uh, you are both a very good trader and a very good investor. How is it possible? And Rakesh Bhai, it was his reply ki, you know, it's uh, investing is like keeping a wife and trading is like keeping a girlfriend and very few people can manage both. Mm -hmm. That was Rakesh Bhai's with due respect, his answer. He says, don't do it. And there are very few people who are born with both the talent. People try to be both. Yeah. Okay. And investor is a different mindset. Trader is a different. I know I am a pathetic trader and a pathetic speculator. Whenever I've tried to trade, I've lost money, but I'm a good enough investor. Yeah. Jimit, what is, uh, I mean, if you have to give advice to the Gen Z here, how to pick stocks, what is AS, uh, What is your uh, uh, Samco's investment philosophy? How do you people select stocks when you have to recommend a stock to somebody? What is the process? So I think <clears throat> in reality, hmm. uh, see, when you go out and pick a stock hmm. and there is no single answer to that because yeah. there is no one size fits all uh, approach. Hmm. But by and large, uh, um, I think from a Gen Z perspective, what you should do is uh, the what you want to look at is mm. something that has a secular tailwind, mm. you know, and mm. uh, uh, that secular ta tailwind will demonstrate will be demonstrated in secular earnings growth, will be demonstrated in secular uptrends as far as the price is concerned, mm. um, and. For most people, if you are able to buy uh, such businesses which exhibit both earnings as well as price uh, uh, growth, mm. you should be in that bucket and you should be fine. I think mm. the one thing that investors should not try and do in Gen Z is to try and find turnaround stories, mm. uh, multi baggers. Mm. Hmm. Uh, you know, multi bagger ho hote hote hota hai. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Okay, it's you never plan a multi bagger. Absolutely, and. Uh. I mean, the, see, the, for most people, the quest for a multi bagger is that they want to find a multi bagger because they want to leave a name for themselves in history. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, oh, I was the one. In who, that process, you end up, uh, you know, your name goes for a toss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, in that name, you end up wiping out your capital. So, yes. Uh, uh, so, you keep it simple, buy good businesses that, you know, that have uh, 
a good tailwind hmm. uh, that are growing earnings hmm. uh, over a long period of time and they are exhibiting uh, price momentum and in reality if you if you you'll know when you bought a good business because yeah. when you bought a good business over a period of time you'll end up buying at higher levels over years hmm. you'll buy something that at 100 hmm. maybe today hmm. if you've got it right hmm. the market will tell you that you've got it right and maybe two years later you'll have to buy it at 150 ओके सो देर इज नो हार्म नथिंग रॉन्ग पीपल हैव दिस टैबू कि मैंने पहले सौ में खरीदा था नाउ आई शुड नॉट बी बाइंग एट वन फिफ्टी वन एटी आई डिड दैट विद एन मीडिया बॉट इट टू ईयर्स बैक बुक प्रॉफिट थ्री मंथ्स बैक अगेन बॉट री बॉट इट एट मे बी फोर एक्स फाइव एक्स ऑफ वॉट आई बॉट एल सो योर इनिशियल कॉस्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट हैज नथिंग टू डू इट इज अंग कॉस्ट डोंट लुक एट इट अगेन इफ यू गॉट अ विनर विच इज वेरी रेयर keep on upper upward averaging it there is nothing wrong you very it's very rare that you get a winner absolutely and yeah. you got to ride your winners you got to ride your winners till the fag end yeah. and the market doesn't know your buying cost ha huh. market does not and know and doesn't care about your buying cost either right so, so you should also forget your initial you buying cost forget, yeah okay what else you can tell about equity investing i mean you had such a great experience how to approach how to read you one you said don't be a speculator don't be a trader you have semco securities under you and based on the data you can vouch for the fact that trading does not pay in the long run yet everybody wants to make fast money mm. and there's a saying na do you want to make fast money or more money the youngsters say both both is not possible so sir my sense is see for a, in for an equity investor or a trader right mm. uh the way to be successful right is is to have a system okay uh, till you don't have a system to make money hmm. and till you don't have a, a business like approach hmm. you are not going to be successful hmm. so the the single most adv- the 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 advice that i would like to give everyone is that approach equity markets like a business and first build a, a business plan which is demonstrated which is manifested in the form of a system when i say what a system it it basically implies that you should have a mechanism which helps you decide what are the kind of businesses that you are going to buy so you should have a uh, a set of screeners in place a set of buy signals in place a set of uh, rules in place hmm. basis which you will end up uh, investing or uh, trading securities hmm. you should also have certain mechanism in place risk management principles in place hmm. where you have a decision on how much you'll end up buying hmm. a particular stock hmm. uh, or a particular contract security hmm. uh, and then what are the conditions under which you'll sell it okay so whether it is a uh, uh, whether you want to sell it at a profit whether you want to keep uh, keep a stop loss whether you want to get out when you're wrong or whether you want to sell when you get to find a better opportunity now when you got all of these things figured together that's when you really have a system so fundamentally when you answer four questions what to buy when to buy how much to buy and when to sell what to buy when to buy how much to buy and when to sell when to sell while you are buying you should know when to sell correct okay you should have your rules in place okay before before you even buy your may sell the buy button. your selling condition has to be defined okay you you may sell when the condition gets triggered hmm. but you should know what when is it that i am going to Sell. Sell. Okay. So if you have these four hmm. defined, hmm. then you have a system. Hmm. And if you have a system, hmm. you will be a successful trader, an investor, an options trader, a derivative trader. The one thing that is common hmm. between all successful capital market uh, participants, hmm. irrespective of what time frame, what security, is the fact that they have a well-defined <coughs> operating system in place. In place. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So you said what to buy, when to sell. So are there certain parameters for that? You can, as I said, hmm. uh, your what to buy. So, for example, when you are deciding what to buy, hmm. if you decide, if you identify that you have a strategy, as I said, you want to end up looking at businesses which have earnings momentum. Now, let's say you define a rule that I am only going to buy businesses which end up reporting fifteen percent plus year-on-year year growth. Hmm. Then, by default, hmm. your what to buy universe will get restricted to only those businesses. which report 15% plus earnings growth mm. then you may want to say that okay these are this will define my universe of what i can buy mm. now when i will buy these i mean there could be various conditions i may say that okay 
uh, I'm okay to buy these businesses if they are trading at a multiple of, or if they are trading at their mean or their median price to book multiple. If I get them at these reasonable prices, I'll buy them. So okay. that's your when to buy. Okay. Uh, so it's defined. I mean, hmm. and uh. till the time something doesn't trigger your what and when, hmm. you don't go out and unnecessarily hmm. mess with the, uh, the, uh, the your systems. Holdings. Yeah. Or you, do, you. I mean, the biggest temptation is for somebody to trade at a in a period of time when they don't have anything to do. You know, sitting idle. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting idle. Ah, so there was a quote, na, ki the biggest, all the problems of a man are your inability to sit quiet in a room. Correct. Absolutely. So trader pay 100% that applies. Absolutely. That, you know, just because the market has opened and the bell has struck, doesn't mean you have to trade. There is an itch. There is an itch. <laughs> there is an itch. I mean, so those who can manage their itch ah. and stick are, to their turn system. Out to better, turn out to be better investors. 100%. Okay. Uh, so, Jimit, you 2015 you took over? Yeah, so I took over in 2011. 2015 is when we rebranded. Okay. So, how have you used technology to uh, tell me the journey when you took over, what size you were, what, what platforms you were using and how has technology helped you evolve to where you are today and what is the future of this technology? So, see, uh, when 2015 I took over, we had zero people in tech. We were, Zero people in tech. Yeah. Achha. Old school. Yeah. Old style school. Of, you, I, I, all tech was outsourced. You were buying from vendors and achha. vendors were installing. All you needed was an IT admin or a system operator. Achha. That's all what you needed. Right. In 2015, when I, uh, when we rebranded to Samco, we said, as I said, if we wanted to be a full stack wealth tech hmm. and an investment tech platform, tech had to be core. So fast forward to today, we have grown from a team of 110 people to uh, uh, 550 people. But mm -hmm. from those 550 people, mm -hmm. 125 people are in product and tech. Oh, that's interesting. And um, so technology has been uh, very critical in this entire journey mm -hmm. in, in every aspect, you know, and, and technology is, is uh, uh, key to everything that we do, whether it's at broking, whether it's at wealth, whether it's at, at the mutual fund. Uh, and the manner in which we used we use technologies is multiple. First mm -hmm. is uh, to be technology is the only thing that can allow you mm -hmm. to mine the infinite amount of data that comes with the capital market. Right. You know, right. It is humanly impossible. Impossible to mine that kind of a data. Mine, right. And that's number one. Mm -hmm. So first, even hosting that data, mm -hmm. you will need uh, a solid technology database, architecture, hmm. structure in place. Hmm. Then technology allows you to, to write code, to write algorithms that can help you in pattern recognition. Okay. See, at the end of the day, hmm. who trades markets? Hmm. Markets are traded by humans. Yes. And humans, whether we like it or not, have demonstrated similar behavior of greed and fear across cycles yes. for thousands of years. Yes, and it, that doesn't change. That the doesn't, greed and fear thing doesn't change at all. Doesn't change. We are all suffering from greed and fear. Sometimes greed, sometimes fear. It never changes at all. No matter how intelligent you are. Correct. Uh, so and so basically the data when we say when we talk about data, what is data? Data mm. is essentially history. Yeah. Can you read history? Mm. Can you learn from history? Mm. Can you identify a uh, uh, can you identify periods of time in history where certain things played out? Hmm. And then when you are in today, can you identify situations which are similar to those that have panned out in history? Hmm. And, and prepared, be prepared for prepared, the result. Correct. Hmm. Okay. So now all of this pattern recognition can happen only with the help of technology. technology. You can do it for one stock, five yeah. stocks, but yeah. if you want to do this at a market-wide level, mm. you will never be able to do this without the use of technology. So, uh, I mean, these are some of the ways we uh, adopt technology. So, at Samco, everything that we do, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's in customer service, whether it's in uh, investment management, whether it's in research, whether it's in building our platforms, etc. Everything is, is technology first. Mm. And we try and identify what is the solution that we can build what is the problem that we can solve and how can we use technology to be able to solve that problem in the best possible manner.
Okay. So all your softwares today are in, built in house, you are saying? Yes, substantially. Okay. And so what kind of softwares you use for your trading software, for analyzing the data? Can you throw some light on that? We, we use the raw market data. Okay. See, the best yeah. form for us is, I mean, uh, using raw market data that comes in and hmm. and then building all our, our all our applications have got built on, on top of that. I mean, hmm. uh, obviously for uh, certain RMS, OMS systems, we use uh, outside vendors. Hmm. Uh, but that's essentially a channel or a pipe to connect our platforms with the exchanges. Okay. Uh, that's about it. But we built all our trading platforms, all our analysis platforms uh, on top using our technology stacks. Okay, wonderful. So how is technology involved in the world of trading since 10 years over the last 10, 15 years? How fast we are vis-a-vis -vis the world? Uh, can you throw some light on that? So I think we uh, as a country, mm. uh, you know, today NSE is mm. the leading largest derivative exchange in the world. Okay. It, in the world. In the world. National Stock Exchange is the largest derivative yeah. exchange in the world. It, and modern. Uh, yeah. Most modern also. Most modern. And it's the fastest it processes. Uh, the number of messages that the exchange, I think that it runs in some few crores. Mm. Messages that the NSE can process every second, every millisecond. So from a technology standpoint, from a uh, modernization standpoint, uh, we are far, far ahead of the time. So I think, uh, uh, you know, technology. And I think by far, India has one of the best uh, investing stroke trading ecosystems in the world. Because we have a direct exchange platform, you know, unlike... Uh, the US, mm -hmm. you know, which is supposedly one of the more advanced economies yeah. uh, in the world. Mm. I think we are far ahead of them because we don't have any such, we don't have liquidity providers. We don't trade, obviously we don't trade in three time zones. Mm. We don't need a market maker. We don't, mm. there is no bid ask. Uh, so you are saying in terms of trading technology, yeah. we are far ahead of even of US, even NASDAQ and NYSE. Absolutely, we are better than there. absolutely. Are you, that's interesting. Absolutely. I mean, in terms of technology, yes. I'm, the, yeah, market depth is different, the size of the market is different, but that's yeah. a function of the size of the economy itself. Yes. But I think in terms of the the structure, the nature, the design of the market, the technology that comes with it, we are far ahead. Oh, interesting. You know, we settle at T plus one, no? huh. they still huh. settle at T plus two. Okay. <laughs> so We settle at, so the, what T plus one and T plus two means if you have done a trade today, bought a share or sold a share today, today plus one day later, you will get the money yeah. in your bank or you will get the share in your DMAT. Correct. Depending upon whether you sold it or you bought it. So, T plus 1 is in India, but in US it is T plus 2. Yes. Oh, I'm saying it's more late. Yes. Okay. And we are also talking about real-time settlement, yes. right? Yes, we are talking about instant, at least the same day settlement to begin with and then finally and, instant. And then settlement. real settlement. And then real settlement. Wow, that's interesting. What is happening in the... So, there are these hedge funds who use all these algos and all. Can you throw some uh, light on what is algo trading? How algos are used? Where are we going with that? So, algo trading is, is ultimately at the end of the day what I said, right? I mean, there is a system. Mm. That system has a set of rules of when to buy, when to sell, how much to buy mm. uh, uh, and all of that. Mm. And in an algorithm, what ends up happening is that uh, those rules are written as a part of a, a, a code. Yeah. And the algorithm executes the trade. The no, trade for no the human There is no human involved. There is no human involved. The the algorithm is doing all the buying selling. At the end of the day, human will just get a report that okay, mm. this is what I was supposed to do, and this is what I've done. Mm. Um, and that has actually taken off, mm. both as well. I mean, globally as well as in India, because the reality is, as as I said, if there are umpteen number of opportunities that can be arising that that arise because of the way markets are, and uh, 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 you know, algos are best suited mm. to make use of those opportunities and uh, make money in the process. Mm. So, um, for most hedge funds, mm. because of the size, because of the because of the contracts that they want to trade, mm. because of the frequency that they need to trade at, uh, uh, you know, algorithmic trading is, is the way for uh, their entire, is the entire way in which their entire operations are managed mm. and their investment decisions are made. Okay. So, how much, how many of these Elco or quantitative Operators operate in India. How far we are, right? We know in US, maximum trades happen because of algos. Yeah. Machine trade is bigger and better volume 
then you do you have any idea about that i think in india also we would be upwards of 30 40% now 30 40% of all the trades be, are based on machine i will be we'll have some element of algorithmic trading okay uh, or even you yeah, yeah okay so and see algorithmic trading is not just about the entire buying decision right? i mean mm. there are simple algorithms as well so yes yes the simple algorithm could be slice my order mm. throughout the day mm. and uh, okay so let's say you want to purchase 100 units 100 uh, shares of a particular company so yeah. you'll divide it into 10 10 10 buckets and all correct based on the price and all slice the order in a day don't buy at one go correct that is a very simple algorithm simple algorithm what else so there as i said there are arbitrage algos Achha. there are vwap algos there are Achha. what is the third one you said the vwap algo so you okay. try and by helping buy at the average then okay. i mean ah. there is no so dearth of there ha ah. there is no dearth who are the big big players in india in this field there are empty number of players okay. there is no I, i can't i can't i don't think there is a single player who will be more than 3 4% of the market acha uh, okay it's a large market and there hmm. are innumerable number of players and what chance jimit they have vis a vis the human traders let's say five years down the line we look at it Uh, will it be very difficult for humans to beat algos, or algos have their advantage and humans have their? See, we have to understand that an algo is as good as the human who has made it. Hmm. Yeah, true. See, it is not that an the algo father is, is the is, human. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, what algos they give an edge is in execution capability. Hmm. You yeah. Know? You, if you want, they are very efficient in execution. Execute. एक बार बता दो क्या करना है. Then we will go out and execute. Then we will go out and execute without any error. Correct. Uh, But at the end of the day, the rules, the def- everything has to be done by a human only. Okay. So, uh, I'd like to put it this way that the human advantage will always be, will always remain, so long as you have the capability of uh, understanding the markets, coming up with insight. Gen doing primary research uh, and com- actually then designing a system or executing an idea basis the insight that you generate as a human this is your role and if you are able to do this role efficiently uh, and al- you and an algo will only help you execute it much better that's about it so hmm. uh, i don't think humans have any disadvantage over uh, algos Algo. and there is nothing stopping humans to use algos right right i mean there is no restriction and it does it require a very advanced knowledge of technology to do that or people can to some extent yes i mean it requires more than basic hmm. understanding because at the end of the day you are dealing with money so you need to have yeah. more than basic understanding of technology yeah uh, uh, to implement algos but yeah i think uh, as i said i'll go back to say that there is no disadvantage that humans are going to have and algos at the end of the day are going to be as good as humans uh, as the humans who designed them okay yeah okay what other use of technology you are seeing in the stock market in the exchanges in in securities firm which was not there let's say 3 years back bit that was not there and now it has become prevalent do you see any such trend because as you said technology is the backbone now so i think a lot of technology now again is has come in in uh, data analysis in terms of analysis of uh, uh, whether it's price data whether it's fundamental data whether it's technical data uh, i mean today there is technology available that can actually uh, uh, summarize let's say you have a company that has reported earnings uh, today now there is in- enough advanced uh, ai technology also that is available that can actually go through those pdf documents and summarize the entire earnings of a particular financial company in less than 15 seconds okay as uh, soon as the results are out yeah. it can it can read the uh, quarterly results, uh, results and put it in a tabular format and give you okay wonderful so in your own format the way yeah, you want it yeah okay so, so all of this was probably not possible 2 3 uh, years back 3 uh, 4 years back i mean today uh, you can take a 20 page transcript of a con call hmm. uh, put it on chat gpt hmm. and ask chat gpt make a summary hmm. of the con call transcript well wow. they'll give you a a summary of the con call <laughs> interesting okay in 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 a very simpler term in a simpler manner in a concise format okay so this is all thing this is all that ca- that is now possible with technology okay that was not possible so it these these are then interesting times being uh, heading a outfit like you are heading here absolutely samco group the possibilities are, are immense 
right? So what I, I have you taken any steps there to be ahead of the curve? We are doing a lot of stuff. I think. Uh, we are in every space, you know, whether yeah. it's our mutual fund, whether it's our hmm. uh, uh, securities business, or whether it's our uh, uh, the wealth business. Everywhere we have used this technology to in order to essentially come up with solutions hmm. to for people to uh, use this technology much better. So, for okay. example, hmm. let's take. Uh, uh, I'll give an example from each of the three businesses. Yeah. First, let's take the broking business. So oh. we created a product called uh, Options Bro. Okay. Uh, where BRO essentially stands for Build, Research, and Optimize. Okay. Where we mine millions of data points uh, across all securities contract. All an investor or a trader has to do is mm. you put in your view that mm. you are bullish on the markets or not. Mm. You put in a strike price that you think that what your outlook is. And uh, the system will automatically mine through umpteen amount of data and give you a set of option strategies that you can explore that are hedged with all calculations done for you to choose from. So the biggest mistake today that options traders make, and you know that's an analysis that we ended up doing, is that 98% people who lose money in options are because they trade unhedged. Okay. They trade naked, single mm. side, either buying, selling. Mm. That is what the one of the biggest. Mm. The other big m- mistake that we've seen people make is that ninety-five percent of the people who lose money are option buyers. Okay, are not option sellers. Acha. Yeah. So okay. So in options, if you are an option se- seller, your probability of making, making a loss goes down is lower. Uh. Obviously, you need to manage risk and do stuff. But yeah. So. Therefore, today, the right way for an options trader to trade mm. is use a calibrated approach to trading, use a strategy based approach to trading uh, so that there is an, uh, the risk reward is managed in such a manner that you can end up having a better outcome. So that's what I mean for a human, uh, it would be impossible to do because for any single strike, mm. for it's an NFT will have for every expiry. There will be uh, fifty call options, fifty put options to build a design strategy. Is practically uh, yeah, yeah. impossible. Impossible. Yes. So we using technology, we've created this system where all of, where the system will do all these calculations, bring these combinations for you, and all you need to do is find the combination that works for you and execute. So that's something that we've done here in mutual fund, for example. Now in mutual yeah. fund, what we've done is uh, again we build technology. Uh, to be able to mine through data, to identify data, we we were the first ones to launch something called as an active momentum fund. Uh, yeah. uh, we launched uh, momentum as a strategy. Hmm. Now, again, to run momentum as a strategy, it's not a it's not a human approach, so to speak. Hmm. It's uh, you require technology and data to analyze and identify both momentum, whether it's absolute momentum or whether it's relative momentum, hmm. and all of that is essentially. Uh, uh, numbers will tell you which stocks are in momentum, either absolute or relative. So define momentum, Jimmy. Simply, huh. simply put, momentum is uh, is a. I would let me call you as momentum stock. Yeah. Let me define a momentum. So stock. when we call, when do we call a stock when a stock is in favor in the market? It's in an good sustained uptrend. Okay. A stock that is in a good, good sustainable uptrend. Sustained uptrend. Okay. That is what is ultimately. So think about it this way: tailwind. Yeah. When you have the tailwind behind you. Yeah. Then you are in in a momentum. momentum. Yeah. When you are driving down a slope. Yeah. Then you are in momentum. Yeah. When so your active momentum strategy selects stocks like these. Yeah. Okay, which are momentum stocks, and, and then you buy and hold them in your portfolio. Correct. Okay. Now. Again, mm. for us to build a momentum strategy mm. would be impossible without technology. Yes, because for us to be able to, there are fifteen hundred stocks that get traded to right. identify which stocks are in momentum, which are not, mm. how to size them, etc. Mm. There is a lot of technology, a lot of data that gets used. Mm. Uh, so what we did is we use that technology, package this in the form of a product, mm. and then offered it to customers for them to be able to uh, uh, invest. And you you made it in the avatar of a mutual fund. Correct. So ये जो stocks हैं ये अभी flavour of the season हैं by this portfolio. But then that momentum can change overnight, right? So you change the stock. Okay. So what is the frequency of you changing the? the I mean, the data will show you if a stock is out of momentum, it's out of immediately momentum. you get yeah, out of that stock. 
So there's no fundamental analysis that you put there. This is more of technical. There is a set of rules that are defined. Okay. There is a set of cell rules that are defined. If the cell rules get triggered, hmm. then it's got triggered. There is no emotion attached. Wonderful. Okay. And you there, come out. So that's what I was saying that you, you are the youngest baby in town. You are the youngest mutual fund. And people like you are coming with innovative products, which here though are not there in the industry. Yes. So that's why the mutual fund industry, the depth is increasing a lot. Yeah. The depth as well as the breadth. Okay. Okay. And that is where you said you take any other product you're coming out uh, in your uh, mutual fund space, which is unique. So we, after our active momentum, we did a product called dynamic asset allocation. Okay. Again, that's a, uh, we, we call it a transform more model where mm. it's a fundamental trend following model, mm. which can automatically rebalance equity from zero to hundred. Okay. And back to uh, debt from hundred percent equity to zero percent equity, mm. uh, depending on market conditions. Okay. So the idea is very clear that only when times are good, mm. you are invested in equity. Mm. And you know, when there are deep drawdowns, you don't try and go and catch a falling knife. Mm. Um, and when the market wide momentum essentially goes down, out, you're out of the market, mm. you protect yourself from a downfall. Mm. So that's a unique strategy that we came up with. We are one of the few ones to have a entirely zero to 100, 100 to zero uh, uh, strategy in the BAF You can go as low as zero in equity and as high as 100 in equity. Absolutely. Okay. And have you done a bad testing on that model? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What we, were the results? I mean, over a 20 year period, this was like a 20% kind of a, a Kegar model. Kegar. Achha. With the max drawdown of 12%. Okay. Which was during? Which was during the 2008 crisis. Right. That was... So 2008, we fell by around 60, 65%. 67% is 67 what the Nifty fell the by. market since X fell. Or nifty fell. This fell by 12. This fell by 20. 12. 12. Okay. And recently during COVID? During COVID also 10. 10% the fall. When, was 10%. When the market was, market had fallen by 45%. 38. Okay. 45% may have 10% kire. Yeah. Okay. So, so you sidestep the falls in the market. Yeah. You end up making, you protecting capital. Yes. Uh, you manage. So the idea is very clear. The strategy yeah. is based on a simple insight, right? Okay. What is the insight? The insight hmm. is that before a fire snowballs into a all out forest fire, fire, forest ah, fire, ah. it will start from a chingari. Right. So, chingari so when you pele... start seeing early signs of. So, explain that in, uh, you know, uh, how do you find out a chingari in a falling market? The first fall. Achha. The first loss is the but best it loss. It might be the one of fall. It That's might all not right. It further I'm... end up into a forest fire then. That's all right. See, ah. market is not going to be shut tomorrow. Yes. You like, can always buy again. I can always buy again. Okay. <laughs> what stops me? Uh. See, today if I've seen that I've spotted a fire, mm. I should run away. Mm. If the fire is extinguished, mm. there is nothing that stops me from re-entering tomorrow. Mm. But if mm. the fire mm. was to snowball, mm. and the first loss was to snowball into a larger effect, mm. then I would end up losing 40, 50, 60 percent. Mm. It's entirely possible, hmm. you know, and I mean, what would you rather have? You, hmm. Would you rather have uh, get in and get out hmm. uh, and probably have one transaction churn more hmm. or risk? Yeah. Sorry, because in fact of the matter, nobody knows yes. how big this can be. You know, yes. if there is a fire, how big the fire can be? Yes. Nobody really knows. And see, the, the again, this is based on an insight the, on the fact that every four to five years, the markets will have a 20-30% correction. Or every two years, you will have a 10 plus percent correction. Every two years, a 10% correction. And once every uh, day, six, uh, seven years, uh, markets will have a 30-40% correction. And once every decade, you will fall 50%. Yes. Yes. Once every decade, you want to fall 50%. So, you want to avoid that once every decade, 50% fall. You want to avoid that once every six, seven years, 30-40% fall. Correct. Okay. And you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, it. you never know. So, you say let's rely on data, not on emotions. Not on emotions. Not on the news. Not on the news flow. But whatever the data is saying, I'm analyzing it. Yeah. Okay. So, if you have a securities arm, okay, and if you have a mutual fund arm, it helps you, right? In managing your equity portfolio. Uh, the only advantage is the, the the only synergy is the fact that you know data as far as market data is concerned and I mean if there is insight hmm. that research knowledge sharing can happen hmm. but besides that there is no no added advantage no added advantage how many demand accounts would be having in securities 
We are at about uh, 500,000 odd customers. Okay. Five lakh customers. Five lakh. Okay. Pan, pan India. Okay. And what in Acha and India has a total demand account. Where do you see that going? What is our equity penetration? So, Indian. You know, very recently, hmm. NSE reported that hmm. there are now nine lakh unique pans okay. that in- are registered on the NSE. Okay. Nine lakh unique. Nine, nine crore. Sorry. Nine. Haan, nine nine my crores. Nine, nine crore. Nine crore. But still. I mean, considering we have a population of 140 crore. 140. So nine out of 140. That's all. Yeah. Okay. But I would rather say, I see. I mean, that's a good number because mm. I think we have to divide India in two parts. I think, mm. I think there is one India which is uh, still yet to be fully included in the financial services ecosystem. So yeah. uh, you know, there are still a lot of people below the poverty line still yes. don't have access to yes. basic credit, banking, etc., mm. etc. I think those are not people who are in the addressable market today. So you remove 50% of the population. Yeah, 50 come down to maybe then you're looking at 70, maybe 50 60 crore 50, people. 60 crore out of 50 60 crore we have 9 9, crore. nine odd crore. Still yeah. a big runway ahead of us. Yeah, big runway. Okay. Okay. Fair, fair but the, the, okay, during covid we all know that the number of demats went up. Are they still going up or that trend has now? They continue to go up. They continue to In go. In fact, up. you'll be surprised this uh. the NSE move from 8 crore investors to 9 crore investors happened in a mere I think 8 9 month period. Wonderful. Okay. You know, the probably the first crore investors would have taken 20 years. Yeah. And now it's taking 9, nine, nine months. Oh, wonderful. So we are in an uptrend. Yeah. Equity participation should go up in India. Yeah. Where do you plan to go or take Semco Group? What are your plans for the next three to five years? And how are you going to go about doing it? See, the idea is very clear. The you know, idea is to continue to, to build, to expand, uh, hmm. uh, to take the security business. Uh, to a much larger scale to scale the mutual fund I think the opportunity in the mutual fund is is humongous it is probably it is the mutual fund business is something that is very close to my uh, heart and uh, uh, something that I am extremely passionate about I think Mm. Um, so I think the opportunity there is is extremely large to build a a multi-billion dollar uh, uh, business on the MF side even on the wealth side, I think there is a lot of opportunity to actually help people get their asset allocation right, get their uh, scheme selection right, making sure that just they stay on course. Mm. I think, uh, and in the process, end up making a lot of wealth. I think so. The opportunity is large. I think there is no reason why we can't become a ten x business in the next five six years. Yeah, uh, you know that's the aspiration to become uh, much larger, mm. uh, and hopefully in the process, end up creating a lot of wealth for. Uh, mm-hmm. Investors. Wonderful. Uh, any entity worldwide in your field, financial services entity that you like and want to emulate that you learn from? I wouldn't say there is mm-hmm. one one single. Uh, yeah, you know, there is. I uh, mean, there are a lot of respectable and uh, admired uh, businesses, but I wouldn't like to pick one. One. Okay. Okay. Fine. And what are the what, any new product you planning to come out? And, uh, in the mutual fund space or in your security space? So, we've recently filed for uh, a special opportunities fund Okay. in mm-hmm. the mutual fund space where, uh, you know, the underlying strategy is to, to, to buy businesses that are beneficiaries of disruption. Uh, again, it's a unique strategy. Very few special opportunities fund exists uh, in the mutual fund space. You know, these are usually offered by AI, uh, AIFs, PMSs or uh, uh, you know, they are. I think general public public does not really have access to uh, a strategy uh, like this. So yeah, and uh, that's what we've done. We've said, okay, we this is an opportunity to take and from time to time the market will leave enough and more special opportunities. So you know there is history. When I talk about history, that history suggests that you know when there is a shift from let's say an unorganized sector into an organized sector and disruptions happen, value gets created. Yes. When there is, uh, 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 you know, corporate actions that happen in terms of demergers, in terms of spin-offs, etc., then a lot of value that gets created. There is history that suggests yeah. that, you know, when company promoters, management uh, and insiders end up actually buying their own stock, mm-hmm. uh, uh, then mirroring those insiders and you know tail going on and trying to ride the tailwind with them hmm. uh, is a great strategy to make money. So a lot of these special situations, as we call it, yeah, turnaround sometimes are uh, 
you know, they may not be right for a standard flexi cap or a multi cap or a kind mm-hmm. of a product. But you need a different. You need a separate vehicle. That vehicle uh, to take advantage of. To take situation. advantage, and you you need some patient capital to take advantage of those situations. Those situations can actually end up making a lot of money for uh, investors. So we said, okay, let's create a fund, an umbrella fund like the special opportunities fund, which will house all of these special opportunities that exist and end up making money. Uh, 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 in the process for an investor and again this is a hard strategy for an investor to execute himself hmm. because the quantum of data that you need to analyze to identify these special opportunities and hmm. uh, actually put money yes. to work is so Vast. cumbersome yeah. that you rather outsource it to a fund manager hmm. and let him do all of the, the hard work and the heavy lifting for you right. and help you make money in the process. Great. And none of the funds that we have discussed here are uh, a recommendation. Yeah. So there's a disclaimer. Absolutely. All investment are subject to market risk and you should do your own research before investing. Consult a financial planner. We are just discussing broad strategies here. Yeah. Great. Now here's a question. Uh, let's say somebody is worth 50 crore, 100 crore net worth. What should his or her in India, what should his or her asset allocation be? How should that person look at equity? Because the data says that people with a very high net worth, 50 crores and above, they are grossly, and India as a whole is grossly underinvested in equity. What are your thoughts on that? So, see, I think the way to look at somebody for somebody who has a net worth of uh, 50, 100 crores or in the, or above hmm. is that you ring fence a small portion of your net worth and when I mean net worth it does not include house etc yes because that is something the that consumables the consumables are out self consumption house is out uh, is okay. out now you have to ring fence a certain portion that you might so need. let's say you you look at your annual expenses and uh, your lifestyle etc and a certain amount of liquidity so let's say if I have 100 crores I will say okay I will keep 10 crores in small liquid debt instruments kind of a sort uh, because I will have to run my even in an overnight fund, you'll end up getting 70 lakhs. Hmm. <laughs> you know, hmm. And you know, post tax, that's still 4 5 lakhs. Overnight fund is the, uh, the worst risk, 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 risk free return. Low, uh, it's, uh, government it's government security. It is government security. It's government security. So liquid fund safe, Jada safe is overnight fund. Yeah. Okay, And it is the safest instrument out there. Yeah. Even there, if you put 10 crores, yeah. you get. You see 66, 67 lakhs, Mota Modi. 6.7% is 6.7%. And it is available at a day's notice. But you have to pay for today's day's notice. Right. So I would say, I mean, 67 lakhs a year post tax will give me 45, 50 lakhs. Yeah. So 45 lakhs we mila meko. I mean that's hmm. enough and more money for me to carry out my expenses, etc. Hmm. And uh, and if at all I need to, I still have that 10 crores to hmm. draw from. Hmm. I think balance. I think the for because once you reach a certain net worth in life, hmm. you can then take increasingly larger exposure to grow your wealth hmm. by way of equity. Uh, now that equity can be done via the direct equity route or by way of mutual funds, but then as an in, as a high net worth individual, your objective has to be to reasonably preserve and continue to grow this wealth. And there, I think the biggest mistake that people make is that they are always under invested in equities. Equities. Okay. You know, they, you know, I will meet a person who will be, who will probably have a hundred crore net worth and say, okay, chalo, mera equity exposure is 10 crore. Oh dear. Barely 10% is my equity. 10% asset allocation. Only only ten percent to equity. Equity. Where are where, where is the remaining money being deposited? Well, some of them will be like, okay, my 20 crore ka fixed deposit hai. Hmm. Maine 20 crore ka property leke rakha hai. Hmm. Uh, thoda kisi ko friends and family ko ya loan leke rakha hai. Thoda MCDs wagera karke rakha hai. But I think people become uh, uh, inst- actually when you are at a certain net worth, hmm. your ability to risk take risk is high. Hmm. Because you're naturally you reach a scale in life where you, you can take more risk. You can take more risk. But your mental attitude is not attuned to that. I think not only mental attitude, mental attitude is number one, but also I think people have a poor understanding of how compounding works. Right. Okay. I think people do not understand that mm. if you have 90 crore rupees mm. at an 8% interest mm. rate mm. versus 90 crore rupees even at a 12-13% kind of a... It can make a huge difference to your balance sheet. To your balance sheet. In 5-10 years, ah. 
there is a humongous difference right because first under investing and compromising for an 8% asset these are your 12% asset is a mistake hmm. and then you compound that mistake over a period of 10 years so human mind is not capable of compounding not capable uh, of compounding, compounding correct and that is where the flaw lies imagine the kind of just for the heck of security right and this in spite the volatility that might come in between yeah, absolutely this is this, this is after 2008 after, happened after 2008 happened 56% correction after uh, covid happened 37% correction after and in spite of all the corrections absolutely so you are saying ki ring fence the money that you need so if i wear the hat of a financial planner ring fence the money that you need over the next let's say 18 months 24 months or 36 months mm-hmm. usko aap you put it into a fixed income or a liquid fund or a debt fund remaining money equity is the place to be correct how bullish you are on indian equity i am for the I'm, next 10 years i am i am extremely bullish extremely bullish I mean, all my money is entirely in it <laughs> okay you, you run your own family office yeah. right and uh, see i am extremely bullish in the sense that hmm. see we are in a secular uh, bull market bull run. and we are when i say you know we often discuss internally while modi ji says amrit kal hmm. this is an amrit kal for investors also right Amrit Kal is not only for the economy; it is also for the stock market. Yeah, and mm. why I'll tell you? Mm. See, most economists, mm. you know, they have the largest wealth creation that has happened mm. has happened when economies have grown from the three trillion mark to the four, five, six, seven trillion mark. Right. Their economy may grow two x mm. or so, but actually. Uh, wealth and equity uh, wealth creation has some in many countries gone by 8x 7x 10x as well so i think it's important to understand that this the absolute wealth mm. that's going to get created in india over the next 10 years mm. is far more understood than has got created in the last 70 years right pichle 70 saal mein jitna wealth create hua hai mm. usse zyada wealth create hoga in the next 10 12 years Hmm. so you have to be in india you have to be in equities hmm. and as i said i think all that you need hmm. and that's why probably a great financial advisor comes on and i often tell people that you know how see, important it is to take a professional advice people have this myth that if i have arrived in life <coughs> if i earn the wealth from my business i am also capable of managing the wealth that i want from my business my and these and these two different things these are completely different things right these are completely you might be very good in your business Yeah. Or your profession, but managing your surplus money is a different ball game. Is a different ball game, Mr. Huh? I'm, 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 you, you can ask the simple question. Yeah. To people, ki bhai, 20 years mein difference kitna hai? I'll say, hmm. if you're not in a position to answer that question, that means you're not fit. 20 years mein, wo jo difference in compounding kitna hai? Ha. Kya? Ha. <laughs> kisi ko lo majaro. Kisi ko nahi pata. Kisi ko nahi pata. Yes. And that's where people actually don't end up having hmm. an understanding. And <clears throat> see, a financial advisor is important to make sure that you first. Actually, invest bases your true capacity. So, mm. you know, if you need to be ninety percent invested, mm. that financial advisor is going to be the one who will come and tell you, "Boss, you need to put a little more. Otherwise, mm. you are under invested." Mm. Under investing is also a big mistake. Yes. Then a financial advisor is the one who will come and t- make sure that you stay on course. Mm. You know, if you are up here, there, there, but a little, you stay on course. Yeah. And then the financial advisor is important to explain to you at the end of the day, "Ki boss, emotion management." Mm. true you know so emotion management is and the madness of the markets mm. can get the best of the best of the of people of the best of people yeah you know and therefore a financial advisor is important to calm your nerves make keep control in your emotions because ultimately that financial advisor is the person who will help you temper your expectations in moment of extreme greed and euphoria mm and at the same time make sure you don't take silly decisions while you are uh, in panic in times of extreme fear and panic uh, panic yeah. Yeah. so wo uh, uh, you know that one thing like what we did as advisors during as mfds during covid that help us i mean absolutely so we were not clear whether we should be buying more but we were very clear never sell in panic yeah that was very clear it is a crisis a biological crisis it might stay for a couple of months couple of years but one day it is going to go never sell in a panic that one hand holding can make all the difference Absol- to your wealth in hindsight we would have made lot of money if you would have pumped in more money to it like absolutely and if you would have sold you would have been never been able to buy it back great <laughs> so i think that's where uh, 
so i think people should get a uh, you know no matter you can no be matter a, how well to do you are you can no be a king at your business ha aap dhanne mein aapke king aapne raja ho gaya aap raja aur wo badhiya hai and but, answer this question then jim i'll interrupt you ki i am doing so well in my business i am compounding my own business at a very breakneck speed why do i need a investment see uh, my so i coming from a business man right i think the way to think about this is that if you can efficiently deploy the capital and surplus from your own business at high rates of return in your own business mm. then no harm mm. then you can do so mm. but most businesses at a certain point of time mm. they reach a size and scale mm. where if you put in more money in the business itself mm. you will experience a law of diminishing return right okay interesting you will experience there's a limit uh, how much money your business can uh, people can say i am always needing cash to be deployed in my business so where is the option of investing outside the business now you have your own as we were discussing uh you have your own family office you run a financial services entity you have a stock broking arm you have a mutual fund arm yet you have your own family office the idea is very simple right i mean mm. let's say you today, have to draw the line between and you have to draw the line let's say today mm. i mean if i'm making uh, again let's say if the business was to throw up 100 crores in cash now that 100 crores does is not required for a broking business and mf business the business doesn't need money right because it's an asset light business right it doesn't it's not a capital intensive business mm. so it would be foolish for me to then deploy incremental capital yeah in a business that doesn't need money yeah if it needed money mm. and let's say if it if the business itself could earn me a 20 25% roe mm. then i would go out all out and do it mm. but at some point of time that would also stop yes and therefore then i would need to step out and actually put my money to mm. to good use true and deploy that by way of alternate assets either there could be equity via mutual fund direct equity kuch bhi bolo right but uh, uh, and you know a lot of time what businessmen end up doing is that they'll keep increasing their investment in their own business but without calculating that the marginal rate of return is actually declining at such a speed where sometimes i've come and met entrepreneurs who are investing in their own business at 5% even at a rate poorer than fd then liquid fund yeah yeah even liquid fund <laughs> yeah even liquid fund so uh, it would just have been better for them to to be invested to get a dividend out of the business and and stay invested also so i think that trade off needs to be done i think very few people hmm. get an understanding of that trade off hmm. and see at the end of the day money is fungible oh. people have to understand that money is fungible you are in the business of maximizing your wealth whether it happens by way of business or whether it happens by way of investing in equities or mutual funds it actually should make no difference hmm. you know ha returns kahan se aate that's a very good point money is fungible paisa utna hi hai limited hai if you are passive income so we we you and i are in the business of creating passive income for clients if your passive income is giving you more after tax return than your business then it makes sense to deploy more yeah in investment ultimately paise ke liye sab kuch kar rahe and as i said i mean see the beauty about capital market the beauty about equities is you can deploy large amounts of money right that may not be the true for every business. businesses you know uh-huh. so i mean let's say you can be a fantastic retailer you have a great retail store in the uh, in the best part of town hmm. and you are making an obscene amount of money hmm. but that doesn't mean that you aap uske baju mein hi dusra retail store dal ke Hmm. If you put the same, if you put the profits of those retail store in in, in, in the sto- next shop, store, uh, next door, your return on the next shop is going to be substantially poorer. No. <laughs> you know, so it's a good thing. Better is that I'm actually draw that money. But out. people have that thing. You know, I need some activity to do. Correct. Which is which which brings out to our earlier discussion, right? All problems stem from the fact that people's inability to Just, uh, to sit stay quiet, is, sit quiet in a single in a, room. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Now, some of the high-profile Jimit, high-profile investors have this thing that uh, you know, if I have a very big portfolio, then mutual fund I should be doing for namesake, and I should go for complicated structured products. What is your take on that? So you have your own family offices. Yeah. You have a, a large AUM there. Yeah. Okay. And you have your own mutual fund outfit. So, do you prefer mutual fund more? You prefer structured product more? What is your take? So, my view is very clear. See, for for most people, hmm. 
mm-hmm. almost 95-96% of the people. Mm-hmm. Mutual funds are the best product that exist. Achha. For the simple reason that, see no amount of stru- uh, structured product or, a, or an exotic product like an EIF or a PMS etc. Um, will be able to deliver a post-tax return mm-hmm. in the manner that a mutual fund does. Okay, why is that so? See, let's take an example of a PMS. Right? A PMS will say, okay, I've generated 22, 23, 24% uh, gross return. Yeah. But if as an investor, mm. because of the way taxation works in a PMS, mm. you pay tax on every transaction. Every time the fund manager buys and sells a stock, you have to incur... In, uh, You'll incur either long-term, short-term uh, taxation. Uh. And that... Taxation will have to be paid from your pocket. Yes, which is not the case in a mutual fund vehicle. Correct. Mm. Similarly, Mm. when dividends come, Mm. the dividends will also get taxed in your hands Mm. as dividend income if Mm. you are investing via PMS, stroke and AIF because both it's a pass-through kind of a product. Mm. Uh, So, on a post-tax basis, Mm. actually if you sit down and see, your return will get substantially diluted in these exotic kind of a products. Whereas in a mutual fund, it's simple. I think the beauty is that you get all strategies in a mutual fund. The You enter at a date, you exit at a particular date and all you got to do is you pay long-term capital gains at the time you exit and all your dividend income, the capital gains that accrues to the fund because of its fund manager is not taxed. So there is a way of compounding, there is an element of compounding Hmm. that gets kicked in in mutual funds hmm. that will not get kicked in in wow so in one one to we agreed that compounding you should make compounding your friend and not your enemy so when you having a loan compounding is working against you when you are doing an SIP in mutual fund like product second compounding works best amongst all the investment vehicles available in the country mutual fund is the best vehicle to keep compounding your money and as long as you are not selling you are not incurring tax so the amount you would have paid as tax that is also that is also getting compounded. That is also ah. even so. I mean, let's say hypothetically, fifty lakh you invested in a PMS versus fifty mm. lakh you invested in a uh, mutual fund. Let's yeah. say the PMS went up by thirty percent. Mm. The mutual fund went up by twenty five percent. Right. But that thirty percent, me, you have bought, bought, bought. That was one thing. So on the thirty percent, let's say average seven percent tax. So your two and a half lakh rupees, two and a half lakh rupees, you are out. Mm. That has to go actually from your Ah, that went out or do dial lakh rupees to aaj ka gaya aaj ka panch saal ka agar uska compounding pakde hai ab to wo seedha 10 ho jata hai ha actually it is not dial lakh and wo agle saal bhi jayega uske agle saal agle saal bhi jayega so th- these instruments create a tax drag hmm a tax drag okay interesting they create a tax drag which is not anything the outside mutual funds so an achena ultra achena investor in the country has to realize the fact why do they have a negative so i keep asking this i have asked them to IPRO CEO, to Kotak CEO, I keep asking everybody and everybody keeps saying and everybody has a PMS and AIF offering but everybody agrees to the point that just because it is simple, so this is Warren Buffett's answer ho ki, uh, somebody asked Warren Buffett that your investing principles are very simple right? why don't people copy it? so Charlie Munger gave the answer people don't copy it because it is simple in our mind, I want something very complicated. And I think you, you need are, something very str- complicated strategy to make money? No, I think it's a, uh, there are two things at play here. Hmm. One is, and that's what people should be very careful about. I mean, you know, these smart businessmen, they are unable to see through hmm. that when an RM comes to them, Ah. He's not a relationship manager, he's a revenue manager. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which is true, which they don't realize. You know, and they are not able to see through that and therefore, I mean they do and see at the end of the day, a lot of these alternate products will have much more revenue opportunity yeah. uh, as compared to a, a, a mutual fund and for an RM. And therefore hmm. uh, you know right. that's the thing that gets right. spoken about. Financial incentives are such such that you get pitched. A product which is good for them. Which was good for them. And not for you. Yeah. The second thing that is the is an elitist mindset. The elite uh, elitist mindset. Okay. Yeah. You know where you have I mean an HNI of the year, I am an HNI. Yeah. Instead of taking a rational call mm. of where my post tax return will be higher and therefore where I should invest, mm. they take a an emotional elitist call of the my with the mindset that Oh, I should be investing in a product that is not available to 
और ड्राइवर एक्सेट्रा दैट दैट लग्जरी माइंड जस्ट बिकॉज हाँ मतलब मेरे को ये ए आई एफ का एक करोड़ का लिमिट है ये से मुझे मिलेगा मेरे ड्राइवर को मेरे काम वाले को मैं you know broking entity or a relationship manager entity in the country came uh, had a tie up with a, a, a mutual fund company and they said exclusive a scheme has been designed for my clients and that is how they sold it turned out that company mutual fund company had 25 equity schemes and that exclusive scheme was the least performing one hmm. okay so exclusive does not mean good and why it was least performing because they could only gather this much aum in that so it was the smallest product anyways and it's so it's, it's about creating a scarcity premium ha ah, so that that is very dangerous and right? that and that works also in the world of insurance yes okay so the company the insurance company might uh, announce and with due respect to some of the insurance company doesn't apply to all of them so that's a caveat ki some of them announce ki last few days left yeah which is unfortunately not the case with the mutual funds are open ended products so there's no last day Absolutely. so they create an exclusivity premium so the person then we go all over each other to just to buy that product yes ओके बट देन जस्ट बिकॉज इट इज एक्सक्लूसिव इन क्लोजिंग डाउन डजन मीन कि आपने वो खरीदना है नहीं देयर इज नो बस बस एक गया तो दूसरा मिलेगा दूसरा गया तो तीसरा मिलेगा यू डोंट मिस दैट सी एट द एंड ऑफ द डे फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट शुड बी इन्वेस्टेड इन बेसिस द मेरिट ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट राइट नॉट बेस्ड ऑन एक्सक्लूसिविटी राइट वो एक्सक्लूसिविटी सेकेंडरी आई मीन इट इज नॉट द एंड जस्ट बिकॉज इट इज एक्सक्लूसिव देयर इज नो कोरिलेशन टू द रिटर्न्स करेक्ट एज आई सेड सो आई मीन सी इन ह्यूमंस हैव अ जनरल टेंडेंसी ऑफ अप्लाइंग देयर प्रिंसिपल्स when you are an hna you want to buy an uh, something very unique car. that should not ha huh. so that is okay that wo oh, aap karo aap want to buy a louis with a bag ha huh. but you don't want to do you don't want exclusivity in the world of investing yeah. their simple is still the best strategy correct okay so uh i think one of the uh bigger questions you know that i always often tell the mfd community and i think what we should uh is uh how does an mfd uh continue to al- let a customer stay on course uh and justify value i think hmm. uh, i think we live in a world where yeah everybody wants to be their own yeah uh, yes. king and boss and yeah. without appreciation for the fact that you need uh, assistance ah uh-huh. uh-huh. so uh you know how do you so that's a good question and it is not easy and and when uh, you are in a business when it is more and more getting commoditized right <clears throat> so see how you right from the first meeting how you approach the subject and uh, if a client sees value that you you bring lot of value on the table right the kind of research that you do you go out of the way uh to do your research you go out of the way to deliver the service Uh, all these things are seen and i think now uh, over the uh, last 7 8 years clients have become very smart they have realized the fact that it is not uh, my job to self medicate myself they have realized that everybody has tried something on their own everybody is still parallelly trying so even if they would be having an advisor there would be their own portfolio that they would be managing and then they can see results over a period of years so that if you are intelligent enough and rational enough you will realize that if somebody is doing something day in and day out okay going out of the way putting extra research and i have my business and profession to manage how much you know i can uh, manage my own portfolio it's time to in every field we go to the best in the town or best in the country okay if you somebody falls ill you choose the best doctor in town we want an architect or an interior decorator you go for the best what you can afford okay then why not in the world of money you go to the best guy whom you know and uh, delegate that M- many people still think that you know i am very good at what i am doing many people still have that then they run two portfolios parallel mm. over a period of time mutual simple approach of you giving above average top quartile mutual fund in your portfolio and just put letting them be as uh, you know beaten most strategies so that relation comes over time and i mean very often i, I think one of the biggest conundrums that a 
a mutual fund distributor and an advisor mm-hmm. will have is that uh, is clients pressurizing uh, yeah. MFDs yeah. to invest basis past performance. Right? Yeah. And, and, so, <laughs> and you know, is. So I have a rule if my client tells me uh, <coughs> you should be buying this, I said, then it is your call. And I'm not responsible and I don't take. I said, then why are you coming to me? So it's like akin to analogous to telling a doctor, uh, then don't go to the doctor. There is something I know which is better than you. So I have a practice where I don't let the client. uh, And he knows that this guy is much way better than me in this subject. 1% of the people you can't, 1 to 2% of the people you can't convince, but I don't let them tell me what to but I mean, see, as an advisor, since you have a lot of people, um, a lot of people today, as far as I understand, in the direct world of investing, uh, are actually buying schemes straight basis. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, they are buying. Yeah. Is, and they they think, and that is all based on only past performance. And yeah, it's not going to repeat in the future necessarily. Uh, which is not going to. In fact, in fact, I keep telling you, if you buy the top performer every year, either in stocks or in mutual fund, you'll never make a lot of money. Correct. Okay, like small caps are the best performing schemes today as we are talking, but we are booking profits in small caps. Winners will rotate. Winners will rotate. Right? Winners Winners rotate. So, winners rotate, then past performance ke basis pe aap choose hi nahi kar sakte. There is something more than that. What about the risk? Risk adjustment return concept has not been taught to people. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. So, people who are smart enough will realize that 10% of the people you can never, you know, they, they think that they can Google and find out. What is a good investment option? How many mutual fund products are out there? Now it is becoming a crowded space. It's not easy. And you have to use the law of elimination. Where not to go is more important than what to buy. Correct. So, jisko realization hota hai, hota hai, but then there are these smart alex. You have to let them go. No, so I think we also keep telling people that don't pick performance. Uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. pink papers also report, you know, one month, three months, six months, one year. That is their... That yeah. is the limiting factor, plus one year performance. And that is the, uh, exactly opposite what you should be doing. Yeah. 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 So, so, that's it for me. For Thank you, Jamit. Thank you for sharing your time. Uh, we wish you uh, Godspeed with your uh, business. I think you are in a very sweet spot. India worldwide is in a sweet spot. Within India, equity markets are in a sweet spot. And within equity markets, firms like you, are in a sweet spot. So I'm sure you're going to grow many fold in the next decade. Thank you come. so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. It was Same a good, fun conversation. Same here. So thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.